by now, you know how this process works as a whole. You may have questions as to how certain pieces of the process work together. Maybe you're wondering, how do I know which way to ship my items? Or how much will this cost? Whatever your question, I intend to answer it for you and give you clarity on exactly what you're going to do, why you're doing, and how to do it. It all starts with choosing whether to ship via air or sea. You'll hear many other courses only talk about the importance of air freighting. As you'd likely know by now, I don't only focus on this. Why? Because it restricts the types of items you can do. Also, if everyone is going one way, then the best way to compete and dominate is to go the other, less trodden path. That doesn't mean that I'll never ship by air. No, instead it means that you have the opportunity to be aware of more than one shipping style that is available to you at all times. You can use air strategically in this way, making it work for you if appropriate, and focusing on maximizing your profitability at all times. Now, there are two options when using air. One, courier and air express, and the second option is actual air freight. Many people say air freight, but they don't actually mean air freight. You see, most people use what we call courier or express shipments. These are used for smaller quantity orders and smaller overall weight orders. The type of shipment could be completed by using a courier company such as DHL or FedEx. Actual air freight is therefore used for larger orders. This type of air freight is almost always arranged by your freight forwarder. That's not to say that express shipments aren't arranged by a freight forwarder. In truth, the forwarder will decide which option is best in this case. They'll likely give you quotes for both methods of air shipping. My advice is to take their advice when shipping. So why use air at all? Well, for one, it's a faster way to import your items. There's no doubt about it. You can ship your items from source to stock in a matter of days rather than weeks. The other benefit is that it really is a good way to ship initial or small orders. When you're starting out, for instance, let's say that you order 500 units. Well, depending on the weight of the item, you might choose to send 50 to 100 units via air to get your listing launched and then send the remaining 400 to 450 via sea. The thing about air freight is that it should be phased out over time. It's not your ultimate method of shipping your items. Why? Because it's the most expensive way to ship anything. As I mentioned earlier, air freight is used by the majority of Amazon sellers as their only way of shipping. Their entire product empire is based on the fact that they must be able to express ship or they can't do the item. I want to repeat just how good this is for us. It leaves a huge gap in the market for items that aren't small and light. Now that doesn't mean we won't do small and light items. It just means we're not constrained by any rules. Generally speaking, the weight of an order determines air freight pricing. Therefore, the heavier the item, the more expensive it will be to ship by air. Pretty simple. However, one thing you want to be aware of is that volumetric weight may apply in the case where your product is extremely light but is actually quite large in size. While the weight is low, the overall order may not be economically sensible to ship by air due to the bulkiness of the product. This is one of the things that your freight forwarder will advise you of. That said, here's basically how that works. So if your items are light but large, then we must calculate the volumetric weight of the package as the cost can be affected by the amount of space it occupies during transit. Think of shipping a ton of feathers versus a ton of coal. Obviously the feathers would take up a lot more space. Another good example in a smaller context would be a box filled with popcorn versus a box filled with kernels. If the volumetric weight exceeds the actual weight of a consignment, the courier will charge the greater weight. The conversion formula is length times width times height divided by the volumetric divider. This may change depending on the courier and is normally either 4,000 or 5,000. You may be wondering where you get the divider value. The answer is that it will come from the courier who will be shipping your items. You can also get this from your freight forwarder by asking for it. Generally speaking, this information is displayed on the courier's website. As always, your freight forwarder will inform you if volumetric weight applies to your order. But this is certainly something that you can check on your own by using the formula outlined. When you're calculating this, make sure to use the dimensions of one box or carton to calculate. Don't use the entire order weight. If the volumetric weight is greater than the actual weight of the order, then the volumetric weight will apply. As I mentioned, many couriers have calculators on their site to help you figure this out. Here are some examples. As you can see, you can simply put the dimensions and weight 
of one of your boxes into these sites to calculate the volumetric weight of your order. The key thing here really is to simply be aware of this and that it might apply to you. Let's dive into sea freight. When it comes to shipping via sea, which essentially involves your items being packed into a shipping container and shipped on a container vessel, there are two overall options. We have a full container, which can be 20 foot or 40 foot. The second option is what we call an LCL shipment or less than container load. Let's take a look at each of them. The first image on the left is a full container shipment. As mentioned, this can be either a 20 foot or 40 foot container. When you're starting out, unless you have a number of items or your product is particularly bulky, you'll likely not ship enough to fill a full container, and that's fine. On the right, we can see an LCL or less than container load shipment. This involves your items being loaded with a number of different items from different importers. This is standard practice and something that will likely apply to you immediately. These are also called groupage shipments by many freight forwarders. Of course, LCL or groupage shipments are not as cost effective to do as a full container shipment. However, they can make a lot of sense when you're starting out, as it's less expensive than having to order a full container of items. Remember, we're in this for the long run. An item may not be as profitable yet as it will be when you're shipping more items into the future. And again, that's fine. The key is to calculate your profit based on what will happen rather than what is happening. The key difference here that separates air freight from sea freight is the cubic meter or CBM size of the order. So in theory, the more space your order takes up, the more that order will cost to ship. So in summary, full containers are used for larger orders, whereas groupage shipments are used for smaller orders. As always, your freight forwarder will decide which option to use. Note, there is what we call a breakpoint with sea freight. In simple terms, this is the point at which it no longer makes sense to do a groupage shipment. And even though you're not filling an entire container, the cost of shipping that container will be less than the LCL shipment. This breakpoint can vary due to the fluctuating price of shipping. It is generally around the 12 to 13 cubic metre order size. However, it is always best to check with your freight forwarder at the time of ordering and or shipping. Let's finish this section by comparing both methods so that you're 100% clear on the differences between air and sea freight. I'll begin with air. So you use air freight for smaller, lighter orders. You can use it initially when launching an item, but remember that it really is less cost effective than sea shipping, but it is faster. The cost depends on the weight of the order in kilograms or pounds. Remember, if your item is big but light, then volumetric weight may apply. Next, sea freight is for larger, heavier orders. This is always our ultimate shipping goal, but it may not be possible from day one. It is the most cost-effective shipping method, and the actual cost of shipping this way depends on the size or cubic meter size of the order. It is a slower importing method, but what you lose in speed, you make up for in profit. And remember, we're all about profit in this business. I've said it a number of times in this module, but I'll say it again to drill this into your brain as much as I can. Your freight forwarder will help you determine what the best and most cost-effective method of shipping will be for your orders. Use them wisely.